I like that this walks the line of you're going to be with your action doing damage, but you're still helping the team, which is a very cleric thing to do, and you're doing it in a meaningful way. I like that. That's yeah. pretty cool. Courtesy stick to your buddies. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today we're tackling another uh, cleric domain, the light domain. Uh, light domain is sweet. Sorry. I'm here. Promise. It's not frozen. Uh, really? Sweet. I, I mean, I, I, I'm looking over it and I, I find it starts strong and goes downhill fast. Yeah, but the, but, okay. Did, that's 99% of the subclasses in this game. You care about what's at the front of it most of the time. Yeah. I think the spell list does a good job servicing with this oh, fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that the improvements it gets, while they should be based into the ba baked into the base feature, are reasonable still. And they actually let you improve how you want to use it as the game progresses, which is useful. Yeah, well, let's talk about it. Okay, so all clerics get a pre-prepared spell list. I like this one a lot, and the reason I like this one a lot is because there are a lot of spells here that aren't cleric spells, which means this is a very unique avenue that will separate you from all other clerics, just because the spell you're casting are really different. Um, first level, you get Burning Hands and Fairy Fire Auto Prepared. I don't think either are base cleric spells, which is pretty sweet. Um, Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray is what's at next level. Fifth level gives you Daylight and Fireball, Guardian of Faith and Wall of Fire at seventh level, and Flame Strike and Scrying at ninth level. Thoughts, feelings, emotions about this list generally and then specifically? Um, generally, I think it's pretty strong. Uh, specifically, I'm not excited about Daylight, but I mean, sure. yeah, they had to include it. Very on theme. Had to. Uh, no, they didn't have to include it in the game, but as long as it's in there. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I also think, like, it's one of those effects that I do think is at its best as prepared because you don't know when you're going to need it, and then all of a sudden, oh, these things are all sunlight sensitive? Daylight. And that's pretty cool! You get a big moment of, let there be light, big corona, everyone sees yeah. it and goes, ah! I wish it blinded or something. Um, like, fairy fire. Uh, that's... That doesn't do a whole lot, does it? Because the uh, invisibility rules. Twenty. Well, it also makes everything that fails the deck save creatures attack have advantage on attacks against them, and it still highlights the invisible creatures. Oh, yeah, so true. the advantage counters out the disadvantage at minimum. So if it's invisible, you can hit it normally, and if it's not invisible, um. Oh, never mind. It says you have to be able to see it. JK. So against invisible creatures, is still hot booty. But against non-invisible creatures, you can still get the advantage on the attack rolls. So you just kind of like set this down. Everyone gets to beat things up pretty effectively. And again. Not natively a cleric spell, so it kind of like a, like a unique, even buff lane. Well, I think rumor has the... it they've improved the invisibility rules in uh, in the coming edition. So, God, thank God, <laughs> that bar is not hard to hide to clear. But uh, they uh, that, if they're going to do any update, that's that's one worth updating. What do you think about all the damage spells? So, burning hands, flaming sphere, scorching ray, wall of the fire, fireball, flame strike. I'm happy to have them in my arsenal. Yeah, auto prepared too. And there are a lot of them too. Yeah, I think uh, there's close to no reason to actually use Flame Strike if you have Fireball, because it does worse damage in a similar or worse area uh, for a higher level slot. Yeah, but so I mean, don't. Yeah. Unless things are like, well, unless you're like, I'm okay dealing half damage with the half fire and the radiant damage doing full against it or something. It's something with fire resistance, maybe, but that that seems like stretching. Or so I think what other spells you want to use or have available? Sure, you've already used your Fireball. You could upcast your fireball, and you That's should do that over casting yeah. this, right? Um, all things considered, I like that this is setting you up as I'm a blaster cleric. I'm going to do the cleric stuff. I'm going to have some supporting options, but I'm also going to be able to just release hell. And that's cool. That's yeah. a great direction for the light-based cleric to be. Um, it paints it as still not like as powerful as wizard is as far as evoker stuff goes. You're not going to have the same arsenal, especially as the 7th, 8th, ninth level slots, but you do get the lower tier stuff, and you do get to feel like you're lighting people on fire. And hey, maybe that's what you want to do. I, I like the list quite a bit. Yeah. It's one of the stronger um, lists we've covered. I mean, yeah, but most of it's damage, and you stick fairy fire yeah. on top of that, it's going to be pretty good. I do kind of wish there was any other reasonable utility stuff, but eh, whatever. Uh, you get a bonus cantrip at first level as well, so you when you choose this domain, you get the light cantrip. Wee. That makes sense. Sure does. Um... Okay, anyway, the other real first level feature you get is Warding <laughs> Flare. So also at first level, you can interpose divine light between yourself and an attacking enemy. When you are attacked by a creature within 30 feet of you that can, you can see, 
You can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll, causing the light it, causing light to flare before the attacker before it hits or misses. An attacker that can't be blinded is immune to this feature. You can use it number time to complete your wisdom mod and get them all back when you finish a long rest. Sure. It's a nice I like that. reaction. Yeah. And it's got like... the good good light flare uh flavor. Mm -hmm. The 30 foot range makes you still care about using cleric medium armor and stuff. This is still kind of like a mid-range character where you want to be up in there so you can get you can protect yourself. But also you're blasting out big area effect damage effects. So like, you know, you are Playing around the lines cleric wants to, right? Right behind yeah. the paladin, right in front of the wizard. And this puts you right in that spot. Nothing, again, too revolutionary, though. Just, like, a fine little defensive option that's very on theme. Uh, at second level, you also get Radiance of the Dawn. Oh, so you want to say anything else? Uh, well, not, you don't also get... I mean, we're starting a second level here. Oh, you get... You get the, the cleric's weird. You get first level features when you pick your domain, and you also yeah. then get your channel divinity, a new option at second oh, level. Oh, all right. I thought you were talking about we already got something at second level, and now we're oh, also no. getting this. No, yeah. No, we got things earlier at first level. This is the first second level feature we get. That's correct. Yeah. Ratings of the Dawn. Uh, it's a channel divinity. So starting at second level, you can use your channel divinity to harness sunlight, banishing darkness, and dealing radiant damage to your foes. As an action, you present your holy symbol, and any magical darkness within 30 feet is dispelled. Additionally, each hostile creature within 30 feet of you makes con save, taking 2d10 plus your cleric level damage on a failed saving throw, and half as much on a success. A creature that has total cover from you is not affected. Yeah. Um, it's... I mean, you're using an action for this. I mean, yeah. if, if there's magical darkness and enemies there, great i don't know that i'm i mean with all the with all these spells uh i don't know that i want to use this if there's not magical darkness so i think at second level you will use this quite a bit i think the moment right, you get I like forgot that second level that is yeah that's yeah, not too bad it, it's kind of like a free second level slot is i think a good way to think about this um because a, a giant 30 foot around you area that is selective it doesn't hit allies and does damage to things like i could see there being windows where i would want to use that um con save isn't great uh but like it's you know fine still some monsters will fail this you always take at least half damage it scales your cleric level which isn't amazing but like it all comes together to be a fine little early game feature and a fine little early game feature is kind of what you're in the market for a lot of time as cleric i like this is the i got an over my head button you know everyone around me takes damage and i try to flee that's kind of neat if you ever get to spell magical darkness with it you'll feel kind of cool i i have a hard time seeing that coming up more than once a campaign but hey Maybe Magical Darkness is the enemy's weapon of choice. And then you can dispel it, and you feel real cool. Now, But, like, past wait, level, you're this? not using this anymore, right? But you can just keep doing this? I don't see any kind of restrictions on there. It uses your channel divinity. So oh, you can right, use right, your right, channel divinity right. to do it, and you get a couple of those yeah. per short rest. Yeah, yeah. Ah, all right, that's better than I uh, originally gave it. I, I didn't weigh it be coming in a second level. Mm-hmm. Which is definitely when it's best, and it just yes. gets worse from there. Like even even if you're doing plus twenty damage to this thing, I just it's at twenty level. You got way better things to do than two d yeah. plus twenty. Uh, but yeah, right. low, low tier fine feature, upper tier you'll stop using it. And that's okay because you'll have other things to do with your actions. Um, sixth level get improved flare. So starting at sixth level, you can use your warding flare when a creature that you can see within thirty feet of you attacks a creature other than you. So now you can use it on the allies. This should okay, make no. it the base feature. Yeah, cause this is what you're you always go on about. With, you know, this is not adding anything new. This is uh, competing for resources you already have. Yeah, because you're going to either use them on yourself or you're going to use them on an ally. If this were just well, able the, the first level feature as an improvement, I and we'd have room for a sixth level feature here, but yeah. alas. On the flip side, though, I don't know. Are are you going to be using this uh, a number of times on yourself equal to your wisdom modifier? Probably not. May, no. The answer is maybe. Like it, it depends, right? I I think. Once you get this, you will be very happy to start using it on other people. And I think up to this right. point, there probably have been some long rests where you have one or two uses sitting around. Um, whether because yeah. you could take the hit and didn't need to use the flare or, you know, like, and as general word of advice, if you can use the flare, you probably should. Um, or, you know, you you just weren't attacked that much and you didn't feel any need to use it. Yeah. Now you will definitely use all of them every long rest. And again, I would encourage you to do that. Um, don't save these for a rainy day. Throw them out if they can ever save hit points. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is a meaningful improvement to your option because you do want to target other people, I think, more often than you. You will want to put this on your paladin, you'll want to put this on your your fighter. Imagine a paladin with 28 AC, and then you go also warding flare. Um, it's gonna feel pretty good, and that makes it a passable little option. I like that this walks the line of you're gonna be with your action doing damage, but you're still helping the team, which is a very cleric thing to do, and you're doing it in a meaningful way. I like that, that's yeah. pretty cool. 
courtesy stick near buddies. Uh, eighth level, you get potent spellcasting, so you can add your wisdom modifier to clear cantrip damage. That just doesn't matter for most tables because most tables stop casting cantrips around this point. Um, where damage you're like, cantrips. I've... Yeah, damage cantrips specifically, I should definitely say. In combat, your actions work more than that. And you're just not like, if you are casting cantrips, you're the encounter's either so screwed that the extra wisdom mod on damage is not going to save anybody, or is so trivial that you don't want to waste resources and the extra three damage doesn't matter because the encounter is still trivial, right? This is not a feature yeah. that is helping you in Windows where you'd want it to help you. And that makes it pretty terrible. But again, it's the sort of mind strike that all the sub cleric subclasses suffer with getting a feature that's kind of whatever at this point. All right. Uh, and finally... Uh, we end on Corona of Light. Starting at 70th level, you can use your action to activate an aura of sunlight that lasts a minute or until you dismiss it using another action. You emit bright light in a 60-foot radius and dim light 30 feet beyond that. Your enemies in the bright light have disadvantage on saving throws against any spell that deals fire or radiant damage. That doesn't specify yours either, which means your wizard's yeah. meteor swarm is imposed with disadvantage. That's kind of cool. I like that yeah. it's for range. Well, not even short range. It's 90 feet, right? But they have to be the bright lights at 60 foot range. I don't this know. Just... This one this one feels like a crap stone to me. I mean, this is infinite ad nauseum uses, right? There's yeah. not a limit to this. So this kind of just reads, all creatures within 60 feet of you all the time will have disadvantage of your fireballs. Saves. That's... As long as you're spending your action doing this. And action setting up at some point, yes. Yeah. You do want a set of action for this. It lasts a minute. If you this will be a very often this is your prep round 100 percent of the time, um, in combat you're gonna find it it's never worth doing. You would just rather throw the spells out. So you know that's definitely a real point against it. I mean, we've seen worse capstones than this. I'm not gonna tell you that this thing's yeah. powerful, but we've definitely seen worse capstones than this. I guess if you've got a bunch of other people casting uh, fire or radiant damage spells. Maybe I get more excited about this, but I mean, 17th level. I mean, it feels like my capstone is uh, Daylight, a spell that I already got and don't want. Disadvantage on saves against radiant and fire damage does matter, right? That just, it does. It does matter. It can. But it's, it's just not always going to be something that you. Especially can since you have so many fire spells. Yeah, they set you up for this, right? Yeah. They're like, hey. Here's a bunch of fire spells. Here's a way to turn this on. Pretty easy bread and butter combo, right? Um, all things like put together, I like Light Domain a lot. I think it's a perfectly reasonable blaster cleric option. It gives you a fine little feature in warding flare. Radiance Dawn is a great load to your feature. And while it, you know, it doesn't scale well, it doesn't need to because you're a full caster. So like I'm not that bummed out at 17th level to get Chrono of Light, especially given that it is technically like we've seen some features that are like you can tell lies and no one can tell. <laughs> right? Like, that's... Or that's just only not works a... if you die. Yeah, exactly. This is a feature that at least has some proactive use case, which I think is worth something. I think yeah. this is... What are your other thoughts? Um, You've talked me up on it. I, I was thinking C, but I, I can go up to B. Yeah, I think this thing's a pretty serviceable B. Um, especially, especially just because I think the low tier plays very well. The low tier gives you a lot yeah. of stuff to do. Now you know what your reaction's doing. You have an extra action for some damage. You got some supportive abilities in Fairy Fire. You got some damage abilities in Burning Hands. You're encouraged to be that mid range character. You play different than a lot of other clerics. Like everything kind of lines up for this to just be a reasonable, great little cleric option. If you want to be a cleric and do damage, list. go for it. Yeah. Spell list saves it for me. Sure. And uh, I suppose I can see. Setting yourself up with the Corona of Light can be pretty effective, especially if you've got a, at least one other player in there also throwing out some fire damage. I would also guess that if you were playing at upper tier play, you are either starting at higher level or you've been like going through a game for a long term. And if that's the case, the odds are is that you have other full casters in the party because that's those are the characters that are going to have the most fun at those tables, generally speaking, because yeah. your turns are very complex and interesting. you got a lot of choices to make, and fighters' turns are, I take the attack action four times and pass. Um, so you're going to see a lot more, I think, characters that can benefit from this at tables that are playing with it. Or at least in that tier, right? All right. Well, that was the Light Domain Cleric. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.